Welcome back, people, to Let's Play Tyranny. I uh, have right. made some volume adjustments from last time. I just dropped the overall volume about 20%, so we'll see how that works. It was a little bit low in the past episodes, uh, which I did in like one sitting, so I never noticed the discrepancy in, or the, the volume difference, I should say, between myself and, and the game. Until now. Okay, so here we are. Take what you can carry, but leave your cart. Otherwise, we seize you and your goods. This is robbery. This is Kairos' law, she says. Hell, Fate Binder. The disfavored scout nods at you as... Well, she's a chick, I guess. Hell, Fate Binder. <laughs> the disfavored scout nods as you approach. Camps up on uh, camps on up ahead. Don't mind us. We're just clearing out the rabble. Sterling Hagnon. I still don't understand what I've done to offend. I respect that these are now disfavored lands, and I'm happy to give the Legion a proper toll, but she's going on about her trading rights. What nonsense is that? I might not. It allows to trade one thing for another. It's not like I'm selling weapons to angry peasants or anything of the sort. Right. I think that's the law. So the overlord regulates all trade. If you lack the proper permits, your goods are forfeit. T trade permit? Well, how was I... I mean, to whom would I speak to for such a thing? Not us, and that's not our problem. Maybe march your butt to the bastard city and plead your case before Tunon, but we'll lighten your burden and relieve you of your wares first. That should make the long trek a bit more bearable. Hmm. You're on this favored lands. Yeah, I think anything that can be argued before Tunon may be argued before me. Well, am I in a position to issue this guy a trading license? No, I'm not. So, I can't help him either way. We'll just remind him, you're on this favored land. These warriors have every right to kill you. Should be more thankful or even listening to you speak. But I'm only here to peddle my wares. I mean no harm. The merchant takes a step back, eyes scanning the soldiers for signs of movement. And if you think I'm a threat to the disfavored camp, then then you have seriously overestimated me. Please, how do I make this right? From the sound of it, I feel like I feel like I'm about to be robbed. <laughs> You're not the only one. I'm being robbed of patience as we speak. We should move on, Fatebinder. Petty disputes are beneath us both. Robbed? No, you fool. You're being granted life after trespassing on our lands. All for the simple price of what's in your cart. Not our fault you don't have the permits in order. I don't write the rules. I just ruthlessly enforce them. <laughs> Please! The merchant lurches towards you, eyes widen in desperation. Can you do something? No. I'm, I can't issue the fucking permits. No, this is none of my concern. Carry on. Right you are. We'll take care of this vulture. Crescent Renner nods to you. The knowing smile. On it. Ooh, there's even... Slow down a moment. I know we're both eager to watch the Archons bicker over tactics like a pair of magpies, but I need to ask you something first. And what's that? The voices of Nurad told me you've come as a mediator, considering the source. Well, I can't help but feel I'm only hearing half the story. So let's have it out. What's so special about you? I'm here to deliver an edict from Kairos. Yay! 
That makes a crazy kind of sense, considering how long the siege has taxed the armies. I can understand why Kairos would send you with an edict to speed things along. Have you read it? You know what it says? The Archons must claim Ascension Hall by Kairos' Day of Swords, or all will perish. Let's see what those are all about. Ascension Hall is the traditional throne room of the Queens of Apex. The throne stands directly beneath the mountain spire, in the center of the citadel, in the valley of Vendrian's Well. During Kairos' conquest of the Tears, you stood in Ascension Hall as Kairos' representative when negotiating the surrender of Apex. Your patient effort, efforts led to the willing surrender of Queen Vendrian Alanta. Okay, and what is the Day of Swords? The 26th of every month or span is Kairos' day, and it's a day... Let's see, it's a day of holiday and rest for all within the Overlord's Empire. Each Kairos' day is the last day of its span and is referred to by that span's name. Kairos' Day of Swords, therefore, is the 26th day of the span of swords. Huh. Cool. One more thing for the Archons to fight over. Well, thanks for cluing me in. If Cairo sends any uh, lightning our way, just tell him I went to duck. Mm. What else has the Voices Number I told you? Only that I could find you in the Edge Ring Ruins. Oh! It's not Edring Pass, it's Edring Ruins. Okay, I'll have to change the name of those episodes then. Let's see... I could have picked you out from a crowd. You're the only one who hasn't spent the last few months bathing in the stink of the Matania River. She laughs, but there's a forced nature to it. Alright. I really ought to be meeting with the Archons. The war tents just past the center of camp. She points towards the northeast. One last thing. Be careful around these disfavored types. They take their work seriously. And have most have suffered too many blows to the head. Alright, so we can't unlock that. Anything around here? No? Alright. Let's head inside. What do we have here? Step closer and present yourself. Well, look at you. This is Stone Shield. <laughs> Our gatecrasher from the court is still in one piece. Alright, gatecrasher. The Gates of Judgment is the name given to the mountain pass separating the tears from the Northern Empire. The treacherous scree slopes and deadly rock slides create a nigh impassable barrier responsible for centuries of peace between the two regions. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> Let's see, in 428, Kairos' armies began the conquest of the Tears by smashing through the Gates of Judgment. As a young Fatebinder tasked with the Seeing War, you were part of this uh, glorious assault. This first glorious assault, right. Having joined the uh, this favored phalanx, you fought along the mountainous mountain slopes, proving your worth alongside the ironclad soldiers. Though you are not considered a member of the Insular Legion, those who fought with you fondly consider you one of the gate crashers, a veteran that can boast of having seen the war from day one. Huh. The guard pounds his chest in salute. Welcome to the disfavored camp. Always happy to have an honored valet pay us a visit. We'll salute. Graven Ash protects. That he does! The warrior nods in approval, then taps twice on the gate to signal your arrival. Be well, Fatebinder. Glory to Kairos. All right. We have gained entrance. Let's see if we can find that war tent. I think this is it. Archons await you inside, Fatebinder. 
Ooh, we found Ain't something. That odd. Some hidden. Mm, some valuables. We'll keep that. Boom, 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 boom. Yesterday you chide me for wish wishing to wait. Now you suggest an even longer delay. Perhaps the voices in your skull ought to come to a consensus if you wish to be taken seriously. Good advice is flexible, changing for the moment. Now we're agreeing with yesterday's blah 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 blah. Ah, uh, shit. The text moves so quickly in this, you're gonna have to pause the video if you really want to know. But, they're just bickering, as usual. Alright, let's interrupt them. There's four reports of avalanches in the mountains now. The Tearsmen can barely count past nine. They have neither the capacity nor the cause to close off the mountain passes. Either way, that leaves the second and fourth cohort trapped outside the valley. The Archon of War pounds his staff on the ground to punctuate his words. A large and imposing man to begin with, his profile is made larger still by his hulking suit of armor that hums with mystic energy. Or it's the work of your perfidious Earthshakers. Only a fool would not suspect a traitorous Archon of poisoning the mind of his students with sedition. We would have killed the Earthshakers Guild for their master's treachery. But I'm sure you have some perfectly valid reason for allowing them to live as your pawns. The Archon of Secret passes a scepter between his hands as he speaks, twirling the rod in hypnotic circles. Oh. You hear the voices in your head. Why, hello there, Feetbinder. We'll be with you in just a moment. <laughs> okay, so he's um, a telepath also. Let's see, emerald luminescence sweeps from the seams of the Archon's ragged red robes. The glow is, mo is most noticeable, where his neck ought to be. His mask seemed to float and spin, never pivoting or bending naturally. Hey, watch yourself. When these two get going, you don't want to get between them. Hmm. Well, these fuckers answer to me. I'm here to oversee them. So I'm not gonna wait at all. I'm here to proclaim Pekaros' edict. The valley was sealed in preparation for this moment. Did I give you permission to speak? The Archon of War turns to you, his blue eyes wide with anger. The many portraits you've seen depict Graven Ash with a stern, unamused countenance. He is even more taciturn in the flesh. Bow to the Argons. No, I'm gonna glare silently. Ah, the Stormcaller. Conveniently late once more. Our eyes and ears tell us you come bearing an edict. The anticipation is killing us. Right. Conquest decision that his favorite cut a bloody swath through the realms of Stalwart by uh, three, uh, 430 TR. It was clear that the countryside had fallen, but the last of the Stalwart's regents, the ruling family, would remain hidden in a massive keep at Sentinel Stand, and willing to meet the fate in final battle. To punish this Karadas, Kar Karasus inflicted the... Karas inflicted the Edict of Storms on the region, and you were chosen the honor of proclaiming the mighty spell. Those present now know you as Stormcaller. No, I, I have so many titles, I keep losing track. <laughs> There's new ones all the time. Gatecrasher, Stormcaller. Uh, dear child, as many names, it appears. Let's see, though the title is not well received by the disfavored, as it is whispered that the edict had been delayed so that the enemy could be warned or given the chance to surrender. All right. 
My soldiers tell me you helped Commander Drottus on your way through Edring. You honor the court with your selfless cooperation, for that is the sort of camaraderie that Kairos demands of us all. On the last of his words, the Archon of Stone glares at the voices of Nerat, furrowing his brow as he utters the word camaraderie. I come bearing an edict of Kairos. It seemed only yesterday you were proving your worth in battle, assisting my warriors in the siege of the bastard city. Now Kairos has chosen you for a second time to proclaim an edict. Tell us, good Fatebinder, what sort of punishment does the Overlord have in store for the Oathbreakers? Right. Let's see what this is. Right, right, this is where I decided to stand with the um, disfavored. Uh, and so I gained that warrior's respite ability. Yeah, I'm not gonna... Not gonna... Well, alright, I'll read it. The Bastard City, now the site of Tunon's court in the Tears, was taken in the first year of the conquest. In con concerted effort, uh, between the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, the first and last battle therein, the two armies acted in relative harmony. When it came to the strike at the city, you accompanied the Disfavored into battle, and though the Legion is normally loath to accept guest in, guests in its ranks, you distinguished yourself and won the respect of many in the Legion. Alright. We'll just, we'll, we'll say it plain. Roland is not one to mince words. The Overlord's loyal servants must hold Ascension Hall by Kairos' Day of Swords, or all in the valley shall perish. The earth sways with each word as word, word you utter, the air thickening with warmth as you pronounce the tersely phrased commandment. It's every syllable drafted by the hand of Kairos. With the edict proclaimed, your pulse quickens and the muscles in your legs, worn from a long trip down the mountain, feel renewed. The tired limbs are now nearly buoyant with vigor. Fuck yeah! <laughs> the Overlord means to compel us into action. No doubt the avalanches in the mountains are part of this ultimatum. We must conquer the Oathbreakers or die in failure. There is no room for error, and no other way out of this valley alive. We'll need to advance across the Matani. We lose everything if we stand still. And we move to back up Plan Green. The Earthshakers didn't make it over the mountain in time. So we do this the hard way. Over the walls, instead of through. The Archon of War taps a finger against his temple. A slow rumble escapes from under his beard. So, you found your backbone at last! <laughs> oh, we were worried past humiliations would make you soft, timid. That was a record for you, right? The Baker's Dozen lost in one sortie. If you had waited for the Chorus reinforcements, maybe we'd have eyes and ears on the matter. The Archon of Secret passes his scepter from one hand to the next, chuckling softly with each toss. And he sends us another message. Watch him squirm. So many tears... So many tears over replaceable, expendable, useless soldiers. I miss the old Archon of War. You never see blood echo in a bubbling mess. <laughs> over a few dead killers. He'd use the knuckle bones of his best disciples for jewelry, and even made a beast play, a breastplate out of his dead brother's rib cage, because that's how a real man deals with grief. Well, that's not messed up at all. Mm. We can make a snide comment, sort of chastising him. I think, you know what, that's... 
Even though Graven Ash was a bit forceful with his uh, plan. Um, he's not helping, this green bastard. So we could make a snide comment. Or we could uh, call them both out. Let's do that. Are you too daft? It is your indecision and bickering that necessitated this edict. Daft? Only fools hate their lives enough to insult our intellect. But, our dear Binder, your invective is not without purpose. Each moment we waste, death by edict draws closer. Graven Ash, we leave you to tackle the river. The chorus will scour the outer valley. So that is what it takes to get you to agree to a plan of action. The threat of death? You place the Overlord in this position with your incessant arguments, but now we've actually agreed to do something. Kairos be praised! Right. Then enough talking, there's work to be done. Iron Marshal Arienvos. Arienvos. Uh, my lord Barrick, my lord Barrick and his band has been drilled on Echo Call, on the Echo Call assault plan. The Crescent Runners should be briefing him as we speak uh, regarding the latest enemy movements along the river. I will dispatch him at once. The Iron Marshal salutes, clapping her gauntlets to her breastplate. Barrick, let's see. Barrick is the commander of the Stone Shields and well regarded by the the elite inner circle of the disfavored high command. Barrack served in Stalwart, now known as the Blade Grave, where he marched at the vanguard in countless battles. During the Stalwart campaign, the Scarlet Chorus suffered numerous losses and tried to blame Barrack and his cohort, but you ruled against the Chorus. Chorus is spu a spurious blame shuffle. All right. And the fifth eye here, and I will ensure the chorus stands ready to march. If the disfavored can take the river, the chorus has the manpower to secure the outer ring of the valley. Our soldiers clamor for battle, and at last we shall have it. Verse, we command you to continue guarding the Fate Binder. Tunan's chosen is our honored guest, and must be shown our finest hospitality. I won't let you down, boss. He'll get through the campaign in one piece. As long as he doesn't do anything too stupid. The Archon twirls his scepter one last time, then taps the fifth eye on the shoulder as the two depart. You hear the voices in your head. Suit yourself, Fatebinder. The more you ignore us... I never ignored you. I called you out, you son of a bitch. Fine. The fool and his puppet are gone. <laughs> Perhaps now I can hear myself think. Rarely do I question Kairos' judgment. But I will never understand why the voices of Narat is given such authority. I shudder to think what will become of us all should Tunon favor him in the end. Though the edict threatens the Scarlet Chorus just as it threatens us, I cannot shake the feeling that our allies will work against us. You've shown your worth in war, and your name has been known to the Legion since the very beginning of this long conquest. So I'd ask that you join us this one last time, to help us wrap up this last objective. If you wish to be counted amongst the Glorious, speak with the Iron Marshal. She will direct the order of battle until we are ready for the final push into the Citadel. I am short a few scouts, a few soldier, uh, short a few of everything. I am sure my brethren would be grateful for the assistance of a skilled outsider. I'd be honored to help. The Iron Marshal salutes Graven Ash, then turns to leave the tent. I will be at the training grounds, raiding the soldiers. Find me there when you are ready. She pauses, clearing her throat. <clears throat> and, um, though I am loath to mention it, the Chorus can likely use your assistance. I certainly won't secure the Outer Valley on their own. The fifth eye will be somewhere in that rat's nest they call a camp, due east. Seek him out, if you must. 
Okay. Yay. Earth Shaker Staff. I don't think we need that. Also, some more stuff here. Yeah, let's rob uh, the Archon of War Blind. Let's speak to him again, see if he has anything more to say. The Archon of War lets out a long sigh as he surveys the map and models splayed around about his desk. He glances over his shoulder, making brief eye contact with you. First, his brow and turned back to his comp contemplation. The first time you proclaimed an edict, you gave the enemy a suspicious amount of time to get to to rid in themselves. I chalk it up to excessive mercy for a backward people. But when the edict is against your kin, that order you follow to the letter. I remain silent. Be gone from my tent to tire of these endless distractions. Alright, fuck you then. Okay, let's see if there's anything else around here. Oh, fish. Luke, Lucia, and Marcus. Talk to those guys later. Let's find the um, Iron Marshal Erinos. Oh, there's uh, there's Sterling. <laughs> that was the merchant. That was outside. <laughs> He's locked up. <laughs> we'll talk to him later. Iron Marshal Erenvos. That's not a name I'll... Uh, or is it, f is it an F? It's, no, it's an E. And let's see. Don't coddle the impact. Push back with your shield. Take the momentum. Iron Marshal Erenios. Okay, Field Commander of the Disfavored. Pounds her fist in the air as she calls out to the warriors on the training field. I set eyes on the opponent's waistline. If you spend more time glancing, spend more than a glance checking his footwork, you've lost. You gain favor with the disfavored. See, Fate Binder, welcome to our camp. The disfavored officer nods at your approach. It's a shame that you. Uh, are here once again to solve another disagreement between what should be allies. Though I trust you will once again judge in our favor, judge in favor of the hardest working and the most courageous. This is the Iron Marshal, leader of the Iron Guard, chief of Graven Ash's inner circle of trusted advisors. He first came to know the Iron Marshal during the invasion of the Bastard Tier. Unable to share the plunder of the countryside, the Scarlet Chorus and Disfavored came to you to help settle the chaos in their supply lines. Having awarded the supplies to the elite Disfavored, you kept the Iron Marshal and her warriors fed throughout the conquest. Oh yeah, yeah, that's when I chickened out. I didn't want to enslave anybody. Well, you know. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be able to keep that sort of attitude throughout this whole game. <laughs> Let's see. You mentioned you were so short on warriors and needed help. What is the situation? I have brigands. I have brigades uh, amassing along Placid, Echocall, and Little Tooth crossings. The Vendrian Guard may be able to hold one bridge. But they cannot hold against a concerted three-prong attack. I have no right to give you orders, but... Her words falter. A short cough, breaking her flow. But we all die to Cardus's edict, should we fail. I am not sure about letting my pride blind me to the value of good help. This is the second major attack on the river, correct? What happened the last time? Defeat in detail. We carved a bloody path up the river, but at that point, everyone who charged ahead was lost. We had no chorus backup. It was just a few disfavored squads. I can't tell you exactly how they were defeated, but we lost the whole assault team. She shakes her head, letting out a long, pained sigh. We found bodies washed up, washing up in the river for days. 
It's not often the Tearsmen put up such a good fight. It certainly made us reevaluate the number when we need to take the valley. Really? Are you sure your scouts didn't give you all sorts of details about the enemy and you chose to disregard our warnings? Hmm. Well, I don't want to piss off Warverse, but I don't want to suck up to her either. On the other hand, I don't want to lick, uh, you know, our Marshal Evenios up the backside. I think I'll take a neutral stance here. We can pass up blame after the war. Only the Oathbreakers matter now. Nice and practical. Quite right. Getting our emotions into the mix won't hasten this campaign. Indeed. Let's see, what's the value of taking the crossing? We can't just march here from the citadel with the Vendrian guard manning the riverbanks. Fording troops and supplies through even the narrowest points of the river makes us vulnerable to attack, especially since our armor wasn't built for swimming. She points north towards the mountain spire looming on the horizon. If we can take the river, we have a clear m we if we can take the river, we have a clear march to the citadel. An ascension hall will be ours in no time. I will assist. Then our plan just might work. The Iron Marshal lifts her gauntlet close to her face, shifting her eyes from you to the metal articulations. Okay. We are loath to work with those who do not share our training and our values, but we know that Tunan the Adjudicator selects only the most capable minds for his court. I trust you will honor us all in the field. Antio will be leading the charge on Echo Call Crossing. Assisting you will be Barrack of the Stone Shields. She points to a heavily armored soldier standing sentry at the edge of the training field. Before you ask, no, the forge bound weren't slu sloshed on Dappleseed when they fitted his armor. He survived full force of the Edict of Storms and his armor doesn't exactly come off. Tactically, it's quite brilliant, but otherwise it's something of a curse. Tapping her helmet twice, Ereneo signals to the hulking presence. Barrack, come meet the Fatebinder. The Forgebound are smiths, right? Yes. The Forgebound are the mage smiths sworn to Kairos' service. Uh, though their operations and the cheers are overseen by Tunon and his court of Fatebinders. Each Forgebound uses magic as a tool to augment their personal craft. Uh, most commonly smelting and metalworking, but carpenters, tailors, and tanners are found in the ranks, and each mage strives to create that which is impossible with mundane hands. Most notably, the forge bound are the sole masters of the ironworking in the known world, using spells of fire resistance to, uh, to wade into the forge fires. The forge bound can work iron at temperatures no other forge can match. And with hands-on touch, with a hands-on touch that no mundane smith can hope, can hope to achieve. Because of this vital skill, the Forgebound are considered a strategic war asset. Their lives regimented and controlled, so that the forges may churn out iron arms and armor without debate, delay, or distraction. I think they're in Lethian's Crossing. I remember that from the conquest. We could have gone there. Um, and overseen that, but we went to, uh, we, <laughs> we, we went to the place where we cast the Edict of Storms, I think. Instead. Or no, we went to Apex. That's right. Went to Apex. Okay, Barrack. This soldier steps up to you. Or the soldier that steps up to you better resembles an amalgamation of rusted blades and mismatched pieces of armor fused into vaguely a vaguely human shape. 
He reeks of sweat, sweat, feces, and whatever oil treatment keeps him flexible. Oh shit! Literally, this guy can't. It, this this guy shits in his armor. Fate binder. The Iron Marshal has tasked me with keeping you alive, and I have no intention of disappointing her. That should be enough assurance for anyone. Okay, I'll just nod silently. This favorite favorite one, right? Barak returns to nod silence, save for creaking articulation in his alloyed carapace. Barak, is that you under there? I had no idea you were in Vendrian's well. Fatebinder, do you know this walking anchor? This list is not as dense as one. I think that might be a dig towards verse. Um, I encountered Barrick in the Stalwart campaign, though he appears much changed. He's an excellent soldier. You're generous to say so. I'm afraid I left the better part of myself on the killing fields of Stalwart, but it's still in my pride and honor to serve the Legion. His voice falters. You can't tell if it's hesitation or regret that stalls him. The Fatebinder will be joining us for the final push across the river. I figured an extra hand might help. And more importantly, if my worries come true and the Chorus tries to impede the mission, we will have an observer from the court on our side. I look forward to working with you again, especially after our time in Stalwart. You defended our honor to the Scarlet Chorus, and a friend of the Legion never goes unthanked. Right, when the Scarlet Chorus blamed the disfavored for failure on the battlefield, you upheld the Iron Legion's reputation and punished the marauding Chorus for their lack of tactics. Any choice would have challenged your impartiality uh, in the army's eyes, but you stuck with your convictions. Better to work with the Honorable Binder than some Chorus children. You know, we're getting all kinds of praises. I ask that Barrack accompanies you there to arbitrate the cooperation between his company and the Scarlet Chorus. Ooh, yeah! We got some new places to go! Barrack, you've been without a cohort since the last battle of Stalwart. It is time we give you a task more worthy of more worthy than hauling wagons and leading training drills. Uh, she plants her hand on her uh, hands on her hips and speaks in chipped official terms. Ash assigned you to the Fatebinder service. You're to assume this task is ongoing until we can find a more permanent spot for you, which could very well mean the swiftly approaching end of this war, or when the Fatebinder dismisses you. Is that understood? Barak regards the Iron Marshal with an oppressive silence. That's an order, Barak. She shakes her head and sighs, turning her focus to you. He can be as stubborn as pulling a spire out of the earth. And he's a good soldier. Hope you don't mind the company. I'm honored to have uh, a member of the Iron Legion at my side. I guess we'll placate them a little bit. Excellent. I will look forward to your success in the field. So will I. Holy crap. That was... Um I think I need to put a cut in this episode here. I uh, need a, a bit of a break. I think we're about a half an hour into this. So it's a good spot to to end the episode. Uh, next time we're going to be exploring the rest of this camp. And, um, and uh, see what we can uh, find. Lots of people to talk to. And shit like that. So see you then.